Okay, everyone, welcome to the Arduino Day 2021 Build a Robot Workshop. Um, we're gonna give it a few more minutes for people to join us, but I just started the recording. So anything you say will be shared across the planet. Not really. Wayne, do we get to learn how to make the, IE, uh, the LED, like the light up? I really like the smiley face and then the Arduino day, nice. Yeah, it's, it's pretty easy if you use OPC, other people's code, I, I, I can show you. <laughs> I'll pop up that screen. Well, that's no fun. When I share screen, I've lost the Zoom video. Where did it go? Wow, really strange. Okay. Huh. Where did it go? Huh. Zoom bug or feature? Hmm. Anyway, the code that's making the organic LED light up with all that is using the U8G2 library, uh, which talks to lots and lots of uh, LED and LCD displays that connect via the I squared C bus, which we have built into our boards. Um, this is the particular one that it works with. All this craziness says, which LED do you LCD Sorry, organic LED do I have and how is it connected? And it's actually pretty simple. So we create this U8G2 object and we can set the font and we can put out some text on different lines. And then we can draw some circles and disks and flip the thing upside down a few times and wait for a little while and do it over again. So that's how we get welcome to Arduino day, build a robot, circle, 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 smiley face. Um, unfortunately, that's something where it's, it's actually, I, um, the block coding doesn't have the graphics and things like that in there at this time. It, I, well, it has some stuff like that. You could do things, you can't change the font size, but um, you can do some stuff. Okay, I am now really wondering where everybody is. Let me go check my email one second. I'll be right back here to the screen. Nothing panicking going on there. So, all right. Well, let's get started and we can hand a recording to people if uh, they need to. So, welcome everyone. Welcome to Arduino Day. My name is Wayne. And our teaching assistant is Maria. Hi, Maria. Um, why don't you guys introduce yourself quickly? Tell us um, where you live, what's, what grade you are in school, and um, what are you interested about in Arduino? Dylan, why don't we start with you? Dylan is on mute. I will ask you to unmute. He needs help unmuting. 
Oh, he's okay. unmuted. What was your question again? What's your name? Dylan. What grade are you in in school? Third grade. Third grade. And where do you live? Uh, Indiana. Indiana? Wow, cool. And uh, what are you interested in doing with Arduinos? Um, just coding it. Okay. Just learning, brand new to you? <laughs> well, welcome, glad you're here. Great. Um, Walid, welcome. Can you tell us about yourself? Um, I'm in seventh grade and I live in um, Golden, Colorado. Okay, cool. And, and what kind of interesting things are you thinking about doing with, with Arduinos? I learned how to um, code Python. And then I saw that Arduino had something to do with that. So I decided to try it. Neat. neat. Did you do Python on, on a, any particular hardware or, or just software only Python? I think it's the software um, called Anaconda. It runs it for me. Yep, yep. That's a really cool package for, for running Arduino. Well, welcome. You're leaving Golden. And, and um, Estella, if she could raise her right hand, she can point to Golden on the, on the, on the front range of Colorado behind her. Right? Well, you can't see it. It's your background, Estella. <laughs> Yeah, Stella, welcome. Please introduce yourself. Well, my name is Estella and I'm in fourth grade. And uh, I'm excited to learn Arduino because it's cool. It's cool. And you apparently live in a snow covered field about um, 15 miles west of the foothills of Boulder, Colorado. No, that's just your background. Well, I live in Superior, Colorado. Oh, Superior. So it's the best town in Colorado. <laughs> okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, glad to have you here. And um, okay. Jane, do you feel like introducing yourself too, just for posterity's taste, that's, that's sake? Sure. So I am uh, Astala's mom. I lived with her. <laughs> Well, she is, she is very fortunate to share space with you. That's cool. Yeah. And Maria, our esteemed teaching assistant, woohoo. Hi, I'm Maria. I go to Monarch High School. I'm a senior there. And um, I also live in Superior. Awesome, awesome, cool. Um, all right, so let's, um, let's put this a little bit in context. So why, why an Arduino day? So um, the Arduino project started how many years ago? What do you think? Take a guess. How many years? Something less than 100. Yell it out. You can unmute. 30 years. 30 years. OK, that's a good guess. Order 50 of magnitude. Years. 50 years. OK. Walid, what do you think? Um, 10 years ago. 10 years ago. OK. Um, well, cool. So I'll share my upper screen here. So. Um, Earlier today, the people who um, own the name Arduino, it's an Italian company, arduino.cc, hosted a, a live stream. Um, so their, their webpage now says, thank you, see you next year, because of course, Europe is a few hours later than us, they're all done. Um, so, but it was live streamed. So there's three, almost three and a half hours of stuff about Arduino things. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll put that in the chat. If you guys want to bookmark that and spend three and a half hours watching this. No, there's some, there's some cool things. They, they have some student projects. They have some, some new versions of the software. Um, you get to see people like, um, let's see, Massimo, who is the original founder of this. Um, uh, some students who have some projects, all kinds of things around the world. So kind of cool, some examples of some interesting coding techniques. So this is, this is worth taking a look at. But, um, so Arduino is a 16 year old project, started 16 years ago. And um, from day one, it was, was open source, something to share with the world, something that people could use all over the world to learn, to teach, to build hardware, to write software, 
And so many things have happened in the 16 years that this is a real celebration that um, it's available pretty much around the world. The software and hardware is now uh, lower cost than it was when it was first introduced. And so it's more accessible to people, which I think is just awesome. In fact, the kit that we have and the software we're, we're using today were not available 16 years ago and it was much more expensive and much harder to program. So things have become much easier. Um, so what I wanna do now um, is just show you a video I like that explains what Arduino is all about. And I think this guy does a good job. So I want you to listen for, um, for two groups of three things. The first group is, what are the three things that we call Arduino? And the second part is what are the three parts of the hardware parts of an Arduino project? So see if you can, you can uh, listen for those things and we will talk about them when we finish this quick clip. Here we go. Have you heard about this thing called Arduino lately? Maybe you've seen some projects that use an Arduino. What is this Arduino thing anyway? It sounds like a sub sandwich. Well, in this video, I'm gonna use plain language to tell you exactly what an Arduino is. You'll learn why it's so wildly popular and most importantly, by the end of this lesson, you'll know if Arduino is right for your project. So stay tuned. So let's start with our first topic. What is Arduino exactly? I think the best way to explain what an Arduino is, is to start with what you can use it for. So Arduino is a tool for controlling electronics. So think about a pencil. A pencil is a tool to help you write stuff. You need to write something down, hey, you could grab a pencil. Same idea with Arduino, but Arduino is a tool for controlling electronics. You need to control some electronic stuff, hey, grab an Arduino. But what do I mean by electronic stuff? Well, let me define two general groups of electronics stuff. We've got inputs, and those would be electronic devices that gather information and outputs. Those would be electronic devices that do things. So for inputs, you can kind of think of all the types of sensors out there like temperature sensors, light sensors, touch sensors, flex sensors, humidity sensors, infrared sensors, distance sensors, all these types of sensors out there. So you can think of those sensors as input devices and those types of sensors can be read by an Arduino board. Now, outputs would be things like DC motors, stepper motors, servo motors, solenoids, LCD displays, LED indicator lights, speakers, and electrical stuff that have some type of action in the world. So Arduino can be used to read inputs and control outputs. So that's kind of what Arduino can do. But how does Arduino work? So when we talk about Arduinos, we're really kind of talking about three things. First, we have the physical component of Arduino, which are Arduino boards. Now there's a bunch of different types of Arduino boards. So when someone says Arduino board, it could mean a number of different boards. A very popular Arduino board is called the Arduino Uno. Now all Arduino boards share one thing in common, and that is that they all have a microcontroller on them. And a microcontroller is basically a really small computer. So when you learn to use Arduino, you're learning to use a microcontroller. And the microcontroller is what enables you to read those different inputs and control those different outputs. So when someone says Arduino board, they're talking about something physical. It looks like this. It's a printed circuit board, and it's got some electrical components on it. But the Arduino is more than just hardware. It's also software. And there's this thing called the Arduino IDE. And IDE stands for Integrated development environment. And this is a software application that you download onto your computer and then you use it to program the Arduino boards. Now it's a completely free software and it's pretty easy to use. It looks a lot like a text editor. The Arduino IDE is where you write your code that actually gets loaded onto the Arduino board itself. So the third part of this Arduino trifecta is the Arduino code. So the code that you write inside the Arduino IDE is what ultimately gets loaded onto the microcontroller that's on these Arduino boards. And the Arduino code that you write is called a sketch. 
Now the Arduino code itself is basically C and C++ programming language, but with some Arduino specific functions and structure. So if you program an Arduino, you're basically going to be programming in C, C++ programming languages. So what is Arduino? It's three things. There's the physical hardware that uses a microcontroller. There's the Arduino development environment called the Arduino IDE. And then there's the Arduino code itself, and that's called a sketch, and it gets loaded onto the Arduino board. So those are the three components that basically make up what quote unquote Arduino is and kind of roughly what it does. Okay, you know, sounds neat, but why is Arduino so popular? Well, here's the deal. Recall that I said the key component of an Arduino board is the microcontroller. Now, traditionally, microcontrollers are pretty complicated to use. The user manual for one is easily over 300 pages long, and it's filled with tons of technical jargon. But what the creators of Arduino did was make using microcontrollers as easy as possible. So instead of just electrical engineers and computer scientists using microcontrollers, now pretty much anybody can get their hands dirty on them and start building stuff. So how did they make microcontrollers easy to use? Well, hey, let's go back to that Arduino trifecta. First, the Arduino board itself is designed for ease of use. You can connect it to your computer with a simple USB cable, not like some specialized cable that it would normally take to connect a microcontroller. Connecting electrical components to the microcontroller is also very easy with an Arduino board because they have these plastic holes around the perimeter of the board. They're called headers. And to connect an electrical component to the microcontroller, you just stick the component inside the holes. It's literally that easy. And Arduino also has a built-in external power jack. So when it's not hooked up to the computer, it can still be powered by a battery pack. So that's like the ease of the hardware side. But the Arduino IDE is also designed for ease of use. There's a lot of integrated development environments out there, but the Arduino IDE is built with simplicity in mind. There's no like bells and whistles that kind of get in your way. It's really just a basic window where you type code. And to upload the code that you've written in the Arduino IDE, you simply press a button and it uploads. Finally, the Arduino code itself has functions specifically for things like reading inputs and controlling outputs. If you were to directly program a microcontroller, you'd find yourself constantly referencing the user manual for highly specific information on controlling different things. The Arduino language has significantly reduced that complexity by creating simple programming functions for you to use. In addition, there's many Arduino code libraries that you can install and use. And these libraries simplify the use of all different types of components, from interacting with different sensors to controlling tons of different outputs. So the Arduino hardware is easier, the Arduino IDE is simpler, and the code itself is much easier to comprehend. And that's a big part of why Arduino is so popular. The other reason Arduino is so popular is because there are many people using it, which means there's a lot of examples out there to work with. Also, the Arduino board itself is open source hardware. That means while there is a company named Arduino that makes Arduino boards and supports the Arduino IDE, there are also lots of other companies that make Arduino compatible boards that can also be programmed in the Arduino IDE. So there's this huge hardware and code ecosystem for you to work with. Finally, Arduino hardware is generally pretty inexpensive and that helps keep it popular as well. So how do you know if the Arduino is right for your project? Well, I have a couple different rules of thumb. Here's the first one. Most Arduino projects go something like this. You have an input and you have an output and you have some logic in between the two. So for example, maybe you have a temperature sensor and if the reading of the temperature sensor is above a certain threshold, you wanna turn on some cooling fan and that would be your output. So you have some input, you apply some logic to that input and then you have an output. Now, it doesn't have to be so narrow of an input. You know, we could have something like, if the temperature is in this range, and the time is this, and the sun isn't shining, then, you know, maybe you want to turn on a light, switch on the radio, and move that lever back to its original position. So if your project kind of follows this basic idea that you have inputs and outputs, and you need to control them, then yes, Arduino is probably going to be a good fit. Now, here's the deal. We mentioned that Arduino uses a microcontroller, and a microcontroller is like a small computer. 
So if your project involves using huge input streams like video recording or big computations, then Arduino is probably not the right match for it. Could you potentially use an Arduino for these type of applications? Well, maybe, but there's better suited technologies for things like that. Well, I really hope your wheels are turning and you're excited about what you can do with Arduino. And if you are, you're definitely gonna wanna watch this next video where I highlight five awesome Arduino All right, you can certainly watch more of that video if you want. Um, all right, so uh, let's see if you're listening. So what are the three things that we call Arduino? Number one, anybody? Unmute and tell me. Hardware. Hardware, Arduino compatible hardware, cool. Number two? Uh, IDE. The IDE, the Integrated Development Environment. Great. Number two. Number three. The, the Arduino code itself, right? And number four, he started off saying, Arduino sounds like some kind of a submarine sandwich. I actually think Arduino sounds like some kind of fine Italian dessert, you know, like a chocolate on top with a cherry, nice pastry. Yeah, Arduino, because it's from Italia. Okay. Um, so, so Arduino is popular. There's lots of lots of Arduino things. There's actually more things than when this this video was made uh, almost two years ago. So um, you guys already have your Arduino little spot like this. Your Arduino Grove Beginner Kit, and so this is actually continued with that trend of making Arduino easier to use. So it has. Um, it's an Arduino compatible board, but it has um, input and output components, modules on it, as well as the Arduino um, microcontroller in the middle. So um, in the video, we showed you this Arduino Uno, this board, this is the very popular board. Well, right in the middle of your kit is something that does exactly what that does. So this has all those pins, but they're already pre-wired to all these other components, makes that easy. There are other kinds of Arduinos. Here's one that I buy by, by the box from China for about three or four dollars. Um, when I teach part time at the University of Colorado Boulder and I, and I have students in the class who blow up their Arduino boards because they hooked up something, um, I prevent sadness and tears by reaching to my backpack and say, here, have one of these. Um, same footprint. Here's a, a newer board from a company in Boulder called SparkFun. And this uh, has a microcontroller in it that's really fast and um, has Bluetooth connection. So when he said, oh, if your project involves processing large amounts of data or something like that, oh, kind of interesting. This thing can actually be used for some machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, out of scope for today, but for 1995, you can do something that says, hey, that looks like a cat. So cool. Um, so these are, these are um, Arduino, boards that fit this particular footprint, the UNO footprint. But that's not the only footprint you can have for Arduinos. So, hey, look, I have a build a robot puzzle. Isn't that cool? Um, here's some other kinds. Um, here's one I like to use. It's um, an ESP8266. So inside this metal box is another microprocessor microcontroller. It also has this little wiggly, wiggly, wiry thing there, which is an antenna. In fact, it's a Wi-Fi antenna. So um, this is about $5 and I bought a bunch of these and um, I've been building all kinds of sensors and controls for my house to do home automation. Like I can tell um, when my basement floor is wet, if there's a leak from a pipe from, um, from one of these connected to a, some, a sensor on the floor and it sends a Wi-Fi signal to my Raspberry Pi that says, uh-oh, that's a problem and sends me a text message and tells another device to turn off the water supply to our house. Not bad for $5 plus other toys. Um, they can be very, very small. This little part here is called an AT Tiny 85. It costs about 69 cents. It has eight connections to it. It's a teeny tiny thing. Um, I put this on a circuit board with a resistor and an LED and a battery and a little switch. 
And this is running the Arduino program you're going to write in a little bit, which just blinks an LED on and off. So that's something you could, you know, just make out of simple parts and wires and solder things together. Um, you can make this a lot smaller. You could make it to fit inside your project or it might sew it into your coat or your hat or your gloves. So it's nice to be able to find small parts that can make things. Um, you can also make Arduinos into certain kinds of projects. Anybody ever play the game Simon? You memorize a sequence, colors and lights. So here's a Simon Says board. It's, it's made as a learn to solder kit by um, SparkFun, Simon Says. Um, my friend's dad, by the way, actually is the guy who did the original Simon and his workshop, he died a few years ago, his workshops in the, Smithson the Smithsonian Museum in uh, Washington, DC, because he's like the father of video games. He made Atari Pong and things. And he made um, um, Simon for, um, for Milton Bradley. So a lot of people have copied it. So this is an Arduino that plays this game. Whoop, wake up. Oops, I'm already lost. Okay, pay attention, Wayne. <laughs> oh, I lost. Okay, so this is this is actually um, has the same chip on it, the same eighteen mega three twenty eight as this Arduino Uno. So that's that same chip right here built onto this board and it has some of the same components that you have on your Grove. So there's a um, piezoelectric speaker, a buzzer, they call it, bzz, makes, the, makes the beep sounds. There happens to be four colored LEDs and four buttons. You only have one LED and one button, but you could add them on. It has some switches to turn things off and of course has some batteries. But the code to do this um, is not that hard. Uh, in fact, you can download the code from SparkFun and make your own version of a Simon game or something like it. So that's pretty fun. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, you know, there's other things you can build like here is if you happen to need some random numbers for a game. This is a, a different microprocessor, but it's the same kind of idea. This thing, when you drop it, it notices that it's vibrating and gives you some numbers to play a game. That's kind of fun. I have Arduino toys here. Um, oh, here's another one. This one's made in a circular shape. This is from a company called Adafruit. It's called the Circuit Playground blue fruit. Um, it's, it implements Bluetooth. It has colored LEDs and buttons and a speaker and a buzzer and a connection for a rechargeable battery. And it has these nice big um, connections so you can easily clip wires to it or you could use conductive thread and sew it into a, a jacket or something. Um, so that's kind of a fun one too. Um, yeah, that's, here's the name of it. It's the Adafruit Circuit Playground. Uh, the blue fruit. What's what's great about this, and what why why we celebrate the Arduino idea is that all these different implementations of the three parts of Arduino um, share the same technology. So every everything we're going to learn together today in the workshop applies to all these different pieces of hardware. Okay, any questions about that? All right. So um, let's see. Let me. All right, so when we, st when we the, the program that we're looking at that's running right now um, is from the Arduino IDE. Here's an example of the Arduino IDE. And um, I borrowed some other people's code. Um, and this thing writes to that LED, organic LED display. And it says, let's see, welcome, Arduino day, build a robot draw some smiley faces, et cetera, All right? So this is, the, um, our, this is the Arduino IDE. And I would say this is not so easy to use because this is not so obvious if this is the first thing you've ever seen. So what else is new in the last really few months is uh, this new software called CodeCraft. So CodeCraft tries to make it a next level of easy to use. So some of you, um, I, I think in the emails when you registered for the, the workshop said that you had some experience with a programming language, sometimes Scratch or other block oriented languages. Well, this exactly is based off of MIT Scratch. And so it lets us um, drag and drop some 
blocks onto our canvas to write the code. So if I go off and drag in an LED and say that it's on pin four, whoops, pin four, scroll up please, okay. So now I've, I've written this code and that, that's pretty simple to do. You know, there's no semicolons or spaces to worry about. Um, but of course the Arduino board doesn't understand this directly. Uh, we need to compile that into code. And what the CodeCraft does, you click over in the upper right, while you're dragging blocks around, it's busily creating the code. So here's that same Arduino IDE code that, um, that we have with the Arduino IDE tool itself. So we are, by dragging blocks around, we are actually generating code. And we can go back and forth and see that, oh, okay, we're gonna turn on the LED, then we're gonna turn off the LED. Pretty neat. So the idea is to make this simple. Um, one correction from the video we watched, it said that, oh, well, the microcontroller, uh, the IDE downloads this code to the microprocessor and runs this code. Well, that's not exactly true. This already is a simplification. This code, based on the C language or the C++ language as it's called, um, goes through a tool called a compiler, which turns the, these high level ideas of coding into very low level instructions that are the things that the microprocessor can really do. Um, nothing we're gonna dig in today, but to know that we have this idea of low level things that are hard to understand, median level things are a little more complicated than this block stuff, which is supposed to be for never ever programmers. So um, what I would like everyone to do is, um, does, can everybody uh, turn on their code craft? Yeah. And let's go build this and, and plug your board in to your computer and let's go build a program together. All right, so if you wanna copy what I did, so the first thing I did, I went over to the start menu and all these blocks are in these different menus. I dragged over a setup loop block. Every Arduino program has to have a setup loop block but only one, I think two will say, that's an error. What happens? I don't know, it should be an error. Um, you can drag them back into the trash if you don't wanna, there's a trash can on both sides. Um, and then, LED pin, this one hangs out in this menu item called Grove Digital. So this particular use of CodeCraft, because we've selected the um, Arduino, um, the Grove kit, it knows, oh, I have, I know about the, the products on the components on this Wayne, board. Wayne, are you sharing or no? Oh gosh, I thought I was. <laughs> oh, sorry. No um, problem. All right, so here we go. So, so here's, we're dragging things in from the menu. Here's the Grove digital area. So I can take an LED pin and drag that in. I already have one. So everybody could build this. And I have this weird problem that I can no longer see you when I'm sharing. And I don't know what Zoom is doing to cause this problem, uh, which I had not seen before. So unfun. Um, there it is, show video panel. Yay, I got it back. Somehow it decided that I didn't want to see that. So um, can everybody copy what I have? Raise your hand or yell at me if, when you have that. If you're having trouble, let me know too and we'll figure it out. Where's the um, setup and loop? I can't find it. Yep, it's up here under um, start, the start menu. It only has one thing under start. Um, for me, I don't have start as like a category. Oh, why don't you share your screen and we can we can see what you've got. I'll stop sharing mine. Show us what you've got. Okay. But I'll have some tea. Can you see it? And ah, okay. So um, you are set up to do um, what's called the stage where we can animate these things on the screen, which is something we're going to talk about. To the left of that, click on device. 
And oh, we've got the wrong board too. So um, yeah, just below that, click switch device and then pick this one. Yeah, okay. Don't worry about it, you don't have anything to save. Now you have the start menu. All right, and then under Grove Digital, grab the um, LED. LED pin tune is like close to the bottom. There, oh, no, that's not it. LED pin, that one, yep. Put that inside a loop and you can right click it and duplicate it. Mm -hmm. Put it underneath there. All right, oh, and also change those two D2s to D4. Um, and so let's see what this thing is really saying. It's saying, oh, I have an LED, I have an LED connected on pin D4. And if you look closely at your, um, at your Grove kit, right above the LED, it says D4 LED. So the D4 says that's where it's connected and the buzzer is connected to D what six five the buttons have to be four so we'll use those and that's that's something you just have to tell the software because it doesn't know where it's connected um although it, on this board they're already uh, already plugged in all right so um so if we ran this program right now what it would do is oh i see i see um what this would do is we turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off really fast. And you probably wouldn't see it did that. You know, just for fun, let's do it. Let's upload this program and see what happens. Now, when you click on upload, it should have you select a serial port. If your board's plugged in, this should be easy. And it says, just chill while it's uploading. Okay. <laughs> I'm chilling. Upload successfully, Roger. All right, what's my board doing? It just looks like it's on all the time because it's turning on and off and on and off and on and off so fast that you can't tell. All right, so everybody, everybody do that and see if it works. Estelle, is, what's yours, is yours just blinking really fast? Can you even see? It's blinking much faster than you can see. It just looks like it's on. It just looks like it's on, exactly. Just like when you're watching a movie, it looks like it's continuous, but we all know that movies you are made of frames that go by. Click, 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 click. But faster than our eyes can see. Um, I, have a, I have a birthday present I'll show you guys um, later, maybe. Um, it's called an oscilloscope. It's over here. It's not upside down. Could, could I put a delay in it? You could. So my oscilloscope lets me look at electronic circuits and wow. shows me things that my eye can't see. Is that the new one? What? That's the new one I got for my birthday. <laughs> um, Wayne, yeah. Wayne's new toy. Wayne's new toy. Um, yeah, it's fun. Um, but while we're on birthday present subjects, so my younger son bought me this giant LED array. Oh my okay. gosh. 256 colored LEDs. Oh, wow. And then my other son, the climate scientist, said, oh, dad, you should have this thing. It's a CO2 sensor that me actually, actually measures accurately CO2 and another kind of Arduino with Wi-Fi and a shield to plug on top of that's an environmental sensor so it measures temperature and light and a bunch of stuff. So anyway. So now I have the challenge of putting all these four things together somehow, I think, and making my children happy to say that, you know, I love them because I use their presence in a clever way. I think what I want to build is an indoor air quality monitor that I can um, hang on the front of a classroom and it will monitor the CO2 levels and temperature and things. And maybe start flashing red if the CO2 levels are going too high because we're, our room isn't well ventilated, which means we should open the windows or time to take a break and go outside for a walk, folks. So I'm theoretically teaching some face-to-face -face classes this summer, I hope, I think. All right. Um, 
All right, so uh, wait, Estella, what did you say? Could we add some delays? Yeah. That's a brilliant idea. Um, okay, here's where we find delays. Under the control menu, there's something that's called delays. Delays in milliseconds and delays in microseconds. What's the difference? What is a, what is a millisecond? Anybody know? One millisecond. Uh, I think it's like a hundredth of a second or a thousandth. Or a thousandth, right, right, a milli. And a micro, where was it? And if we delay microseconds using the Greek letter mu, that's actually not a U, it's a U with a little taily on the bottom, micro, one millionth. What's the moving? One, one millionth. Um, so yeah, so that one, that's, that's too short. Um, so yeah, sure, let's use this. So if we take delay milliseconds, duplicate them, and we'll put one between when we turn it on and we turn it off, the one after we turn it off, now it'll turn on, wait 1,000 milliseconds, which is one second. Turn off the LED, wait another 1,000 milliseconds, which is a second, and then start over again. And it'll do this forever because it has nothing else to do. That's kind of the way Arduinos are. They just do their loop all the time. So copy what I did and upload this and let's see what happens. Mine's work. Mine's busy blinking. Blink. Estelle, yours is blinking once a second? Uh-huh. Okay, cool. Waleed and Dylan, let us know when you've got that happening. shouldn't block what I have there so you can see it. I'm having a little bit of issues. All right. If you share your screen, we will work together on this. Go ahead, we'll each share and we'll, we'll, we'll see it. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. What are you no. able to upload? When I press upload, I it does this. Ah, well, okay. So go download the device assistant that's asking for that. I did, and then it, and I went all the way through everything, and then it told me it can't download it because Apple can't like check if it has malicious software or something like that. Great, okay. Well, a fine example of why following my email instructions before the class stops, the story would have been helpful. Um, so, well, if you wanna oh, walk us through. Hi, Wayne, this is Janan. So hi. we did, um, but I, I'm not comfortable overriding it. So okay. I was hoping that it would still work. Even the device assist is not, um, not working, yeah. but we'll, we'll try to, I'm going to try to help him really quick um, problem solve, and then we'll try to catch up to what you guys are doing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I understand you might feel uncomfortable installing the software. Um, the reality is, is the code ref people are still working with Apple to get this to be a verified vendor. It takes a little while. And, you know, oh, sure. Definitely. I, I totally understand. Unfortunately, have to write some checks and pay some money. Um, it, 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 yeah. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same code will be a bug fixed improved version. But if, if you feel like overriding that you have to um, uh, control click the application, and then it'll say you sure you want to install this and you'll, you'll be okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, just give me give me a second and we'll we'll just try to problem solve here. Awesome. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right, Dylan, do you have a blinking LED now? No, not yet. All right, what's what's happening? Oh, oh, it uploaded some Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna 
Oh, oh, sorry, I, uh, you're still doing what you're sorry. Walid, I meant Walid. What do you what do you have happening? Walid. Yeah. You have a blinking LED? Um not yet. It's not doing it yet because we need to upload it. Okay, you guys need to upload also. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm confusing who's who because <laughs> your pick your image moved on the screen. Okay. So um so often when programmers are learning new languages, um they talk about, we have success, blinkiness. Okay, awesome. Okay, cool. Um, when they talk about learning new languages, um, it takes a lot. You have to have your computer set up. You have to learn something about the language. You have to learn about your programming tools. And you have to be confident that you can go through the whole process of writing a program, compiling the program, sending the program to your hardware and having the hardware do something. Or if it's not hardware involved, if it's, you know, I don't know, just running on a screen or in a browser. Um, so often we say, oh, the first program you write is hello world. And so um, hello world is like, oh, I can print things out. And that makes a lot of sense for software that only has a screen to interact with. But hello world for hardware typically is, is blinking an LED. So if you can blink the LED, you can say, I know hello world in Arduino, all right? Um, so, okay, let's think, what else could we do with this? Um, how about making it blink faster? Ideas on how you can make it blink faster, Dylan? Um, maybe going to operators. Operators? Yeah. Maybe you, maybe you could maybe you can plug it into the wall and get more power. It would go faster. Maybe. No. You could uh, you could um, let's see. You could you could heat it up with a with a hair dryer. Maybe that way I can go faster. You could make the delay thing uh, you could. smaller. Be careful about hair dryers, by the way. If it's too hot, sometimes it does terrible things to your hair. Just, just saying. Um, yeah, so the, what's controlling the, the speed of the flashing is the delay. So when we say turn on and then wait, delay, do nothing for a thousand milliseconds. If I want it to go faster, should I make the delay more than a thousand or less than a thousand? Less. Less, it's kind of opposite, right? So I'm gonna make mine 100. Let's see how that goes. Um, all right, I'll upload that and I'll show you how it's looking on my screen, on my board. Well, that was fast and it's blinking faster. Yeah. Yeah, love it. Let's see. Dylan, did you get, make yours go faster? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so here's an idea. Let's suppose we didn't want the light to blink all the time, that we wanted to only blink when we press the button. If you look over in the lower left corner of the board, there's a thing that says button. It's, it's pushable, it's a little clicky clicky button, a push button, right? Everybody find that lower left it says button. So if the LED is an output from the point of view of the Arduino board, what would you call a push button, not an output, but a input. In input. So inputs and outputs, great. So guess what? CodeCraft knows about inputs too. So let's go over to Grove Digital and, oh, you know what? Um, yeah, it does right here. At the very bottom Grove Digital, this is button pin is pressed. Oh, uh, you're not sharing. I'm not sharing. Thank you, Maria. You know, there should be artificial intelligence in Zoom that knows when you're using the teacher class and detect when the instructors, sounds like they're demoing something, but forgot to press share. <laughs> cool. 
Um, what makes things extra crazy is um, I have two monitors. So I'm looking up here because that's the stuff I'm sharing and the stuff down here, I'm not. So, okay. So, all right. So I pulled over from Grove Digital on the bottom button. D2 is pressed and put it here. So here's a block that has a different shape. It has two um, angled ends to it. And I can't directly put that in here. It won't like it. It doesn't fit anywhere. Nothing fits. So in this jigsaw puzzle of blocks, nothing likes this. Um, I have to find a place to put that in there. So this is really um, an expression that says it's a logical value. Button D2 is pressed either equals yes, it was pressed, or no, it wasn't, or true, it was pressed, no, it wasn't, false, or on or off, or high or low. In Arduino, all these things are equivalent, the idea of something being true or false, on or off. So this thing evaluates to the value true or false, and I can use that in something that's interested is that as an input. Uh, before I get there, let's point out, is D2 correct? Take a look at your button. Dylan, take a look at the button on your board. What does it say above your button? Button. Yeah, right to the, yeah, on the button, but just, just above the button to the left, it has a, a little, a little, some text to the left, a little, a little circular, what do you would call this, a lozenge shaped thing. Mine says, D4. Everybody else will say D4 also? Yeah. So that means in the code, if we said D2, it's asking for the state of the button connected to D2. We don't have a button on D2. We have to change this to D4. Okay. Now, what to do with this? Um, well, let's. My D on the button is D6. Your button says D6? Yeah. Oh, right. Thank you. It is D6. Thank you. That would have been, that would have created a bug. <laughs> Thanks, Estella. Thanks, Estella. Awesome. Um, I would have been scratching my head. Why does my button not work? Great. Let's go into control and see what can we do with this true false um, expression. Well, let's go grab if then else, this big block here. All right. Notice that if something has the same shape as this expression, the, the, the angular block. So I can stick that in there and look, it lights up and says, love it, I want that. So if button D6 is pressed, then do this stuff, else do this stuff, right? So if, it, if the button's pressed, do the things here, otherwise do something else. So I'm gonna take this whole code we had that did the blinking, drag it out of the loop, stick it inside this part of if, and then put that back inside the loop. So now every time through the loop, we're gonna ask, hey, is the button pressed? If it is, go blink once. If not, do nothing. And we can fill in to do nothing with other things. So everybody copy, copy what I did, and let's see if this works. All right, so on mine, if I press the button really fast, I get one blink. If I hold it down, it goes blinky, 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 blinky. Because if I'm holding it down, every time it goes, hey, is the button pressed? The answer is true. So it keeps on blinking. Take it away and it stops. Everybody got something like that working? Dylan's, Dylan's happy. Stella, cool? All right. What can we do with this? Let's see. Hmm. Let's do something with the else. So the button's pressed. Um, 
it'll blink fast. How about when the button's not pressed, it blinks, blinks slowly. I'm gonna do this, take this, this whole block here. All this, I'm gonna make a copy of the, of the blink and put it down on the else. And of course, right now, since this code's identical, if the button's pressed, do this. If the button's not pressed, do exactly the same thing. So that wouldn't be very interesting. It would look kind of the same, right? Um, I'm gonna change the delay. So let's make this a thousand. So it'll blink 10 times slower, just once a second. If the button's not pressed, when the button is pressed, it'll blink fast, right? So see what I did? I copied the chunk of code inside the, inside the true part and then put it inside the else part and changed the delays. So see if you can copy that. And okay, uploaded successfully. All right, now mine's blinking just once a second, lazy. If I press the button, it starts blinking fast. Mine is working. You're just doing the same thing? Cool. Yeah, Dylan, awesome. All right, so um, it's three o'clock, top of the hour here in Colorado. Uh, well, it's top of the hour area everywhere, top of the three o'clock hour. So we're halfway through our workshop. I think it's time for a stretch or a break, or maybe if you need to go um, do something biological, go for it. Um, if you want, um, hang out and, and do some more things. I have one idea. Um, let's use the control repeat block. I'm going to put this over here and let's think of some cool way to do something 10 times or five times, all right? Um, I'm going to be right back. I need to refill my tea and take a stretch. I suggest you all get up and give us a stretch too. And I will be right back.
more hot water for my tea, yay. You know, they say um, March is in like a lion and out like a lamb. I don't know how that applies in Colorado, but I think it's more like March is in like hot tea and out like iced tea. So it gets warm, I'll have my iced tea. Okay, Stella's back. Dylan's back with a hat, awesome hat. And a weapon, okay, good. Um, <laughs> very nice. Walid, are you back? Yeah, it's taking, it's gonna take like a minute and a half. Um, You're figuring it out? Cool, all right. Um, so I did record this, right? Yeah, good. Um, so I'll make the recording available um, to the people who signed up for this also, so they can check it out. You could fast forward, go to the part you want um, and see what we got. So yeah, why not? Because this is supposed to be um, useful. So anyway, all right. Um, so the repeat block, anybody have a good guess what repeat does? Stella, what's your guess? It repeats. No, that's insane. Why would they call it repeat? Must do something else. Yeah, does it, it says all the stuff in the inside, do it 10 times. So um, I'll leave it to you. Um, I'm thinking when I press the button, I want to blink um, three times. Otherwise, I'll just let it blink slowly. So, okay, I'm gonna take repeat and change it to three. And I'm gonna take this stuff out of this part of the if statement, if block, put it in here. Now I'm gonna say, blink that three times. Make it blink even faster. I'm gonna take it down to 50. Put this back in here under the, the true part of if. So if the button is pressed, then blink three times fast. Otherwise, just blink slow. All right, this is already looking like a pretty complex program. And all we're doing is just adding another thing on top of it. So let's see what happens when I upload this one. You know, this is the time when people say, I wonder if it'll work. And in my experience, computer programming pretty much does exactly what you told it to do. And if it doesn't do what you expected, either something's broken or your code's not what you think it does. Um, and figuring out the difference is, is the troubling diagnosis debugging part of, of computers. Like, well, why didn't that work the right way? So, all right, um, I'll share my... All right, here's my board. There it is slowly blinking when the button's not pressed. When I do press the button, blinks fast. When I let go, blinks slow, but okay. That's when I'm holding it down, but how about I just hold it once? So this program's kind of imperfect. It's doing exactly what I said, but it's a little bit buggy. I think mine works, except it's blinking very, very fast. Mm-hmm. But how about the repeat three times? Uh, I think that works. Well. Well, here's here's where I introduced the problem, maybe purposely. Um, so. When I release, when I, it, it's not looking at the button all the time. If it's in the else part, when it's waiting really two seconds, it's not paying attention to the button at all. So I can, while it's in else, I can hold the button and release and it won't know. Um, on this side, if I happen to be holding the button down, it'll check it again and it'll go so fast that I can't tell where it did it three times or not, right? So let's see if this one works a little better. Um, so this, this is like the challenge of, of what they call real-time programming, like dealing with 
users pressing buttons and making sure you don't miss when you press them or not. And this program has a bit of a flaw in that it's um, lo only looking for the button at some times. There's other techniques to do this more reliably, um, not in, in block coding at this point, or not at least this version of block coding. So I'll, now I make it go a little slower. So let's see. There at one. Oh. So now it's slow. One, two, three, sort of detectable. Um, what would make this actually more interesting is to make sure that the idle is, is, is actually doing something faster. So let's suppose we did this. Mm. Can we try doing like sound sensor? Uh, well, yeah, we'll get there. You're getting tired of the LED, I can tell. Good. All right. That's, that's, the, that's the input I was looking for. So um, here's another way to do this. So now it's busy this, doing this little flash thing. And now when I press the button, it goes blink, 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 then back to flash. So the tricky part here is I spend so much time in else because I, I had two second delay. It's not watching the button. But now if I'm only de delaying a tenth of a second, or um, 0.11 of a second, then I can catch the button presses. There, one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Um, anybody have any other ideas what to do with repeat? Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on. Um, well, let's look around this board. What else is there on here? Um, I kind of like the the thing right next to the um, the button is the rotary rotary potentiometer, a knob. It's another input, and we can use it to give us a number. So let's see. Um, hmm. I'm gonna go back to, just to make the screen a little easier to see. Um, yeah, let's do this. So, <laughs> and I'm thinking sort of just, just thinking what you guys want to do here. I, I have all kinds of lessons set up. But I'm just sort of thinking in my feet. Uh, we will see. So here, um, I'm going to simplify this so it fits on the screen. And I want to bring in a new input. So um, take a look at your board. And what does it say above the, the knob? It says rotary potentiometer. Rotary means it turns. Potentiometer, oh, that's a big word. Um, it means that. Um, it's measuring a potential. Really what this does is it's an input and it gives a number to the Arduino of between 0 and 1,023. Um, it's really sending in a voltage, but for today, I'll make it simple. Um, all right, so I turn this knob and to the left of it, what does it say? Rotary potentiometer, but to the left says, doesn't say D, it says A something. Anybody call it what it says, Estella, what does it say? A zero. A zero, okay. So that says this potentiometer is connected to pin A zero. And it's not an, a digital input, D means digital. And like I said earlier, digital is like the true false part of if the button is pressed. So it can be true or false, on or off. Analog means it's a number, something that varies between zero and something. So a lot more numbers. So as a user input, I can now specify um, a number instead of just yes or no. So let's see if we can use that. I'm thinking we'll use it to change, um, we'll use it to change how fast it blinks. Let me take the repeat out of here, right? So let's say instead of repeating delay, instead of um, delay microseconds 500, let's let um, the rotary poten potentiometer control how long the de delay is. We can make it blink fast or blink slow based on the potentiometer. So here's how we're going to do this. Um, 
the potentiometer is an input and it's analog and it's on pin A0. So here, I'm gonna to go to input and drag analog read pin A0. And now we have another shape block with, with rounded sides. That means this gives us a number. So I can only drag this in places that want numbers. All right, so let's see. I can drag it right in over here. So first gonna duplicate it. Um, change my mind. You know what? I'm gonna introduce two things at once if you, if you, if you stick with me. Um, Cause it's just a workshop, you don't have much time. I'm gonna actually use something called a variable. So over on the, on the panel, I have variable, I have a menu item that says variables and I'll say, make a variable. Um, let's see, now we have to do what all computer science is spend too much time thinking about. What should the name of my variable be? Oh, well, I'd like this to be the delay time for uh, in between blinks. So what would be a good variable name for that? How about um, 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 banana? fruit, um, um, Oreo cookie. What would be a good name for the delay time? Uh, you could call it the delay time. Delay time, radical. Okay. Um, whoops. And so here's another thing that computer scientists argue about. Well, how should I spell variables? So a lot of people in Arduino land um, and Python land like to do things like small d delay, capital T time, because these are really two words smashed together in one variable name. It's nice and descriptive, but to point out that there's a second word, well, I could have called it capital D, lowercase delay, capital T, that sort of makes sense, but I don't know, this seems to be the standard. This is called camel case. So like a camel, at one end, it's kind of, short and then it has a big hump in the middle and it's short in the back at where the tail is. So this is called camel case. So if you wanna do this too, you can make a variable, call it delay time. Um, for all spites, for this sprite only, that doesn't really apply to Arduino, but we can show you that later. So I'll make a variable called delay time. Oh, cool. So now I have a variable and I need to set it to something. Hmm, well, oops variables. So I want to set delay time to something. Um, well, let's see. Every time I start the loop, I could set the delay time and I'll slay it to what I to the analog read pin. So now at the top of the loop, oh, I read the um, analog component at A0, which is the rotary potentiometer. I set I set delay time to that variable. Now I have a number called delay time, which I can use. So instead of saying delay time 500, I oh, can't type in here. I'm trying to type, oh, how do I get that variable in? Oh, I see. Go back over to variables, take delay time, drag it into the shape, boom, and do it again. Variables, delay time, drag into the shape. So now instead of delaying 500, we are delaying by whatever number the rotary potentiometer says we should do. Let me see if this is gonna work. Is it gonna work? Anybody find my bug yet? Do I have a bug? Oh, let's see. Um, set the delay time. If it's pressed, then on, off, that's the same code. Delay for delay time. I don't know, sounds good to me. What do you think? Go for it. Yeah, I don't have to think that much. Miles will just try it. What could happen? It's not going to catch fire or anything. That's what's kind of fun about CodeCraft and this Grove kit is that you kind of can't make any mistakes that are like, like you can't undo. It may not work the way you want, but it's not going to like break. So that's cool. All right. So what's my board doing? Okay. I turn the knob. Nothing happens. Why? Because the button's not down. All right. I'll press the button down. Blink, blink, blink. Cool. I'm going to hold the button down and turn the knob. And I turn it up there, it blinks even faster. I turn it 
to the left, it blinks nice and slow. So cool. All right, so you guys go copy that. And I am gonna, yeah. I'm gonna turn on my birthday present, hook up my oscilloscope. I think mine works. Yours is working? Mm -hmm. What's it doing? It's uh, when you turn this knob, it goes very fast. And then if you turn it over here, then it goes slower. Oh, so when it's going really fast, how fast is it going? Like super fast that you can't even see that it's blinking. Can't even see it. Yeah, I agree. Dylan, Walid, where are you guys? I did. Yeah, and is it working like this? Yeah. Cool. Um, now the USB driver that we downloaded isn't working. Okay. Um, you're not gonna like this. Sometimes in a Mac you have to reboot have to install the USB driver to get it to work. Is it not installing or is it just not, you're not seeing a port? We installed it, but now it's not working. And how do you know it's not working? Um, you... it's, it's saying when he tries to upload, it's saying that it's an upload failure. Ah, okay. And, and so we're trying to unplug the device and then plug it back in. USB driver then, um, I don't know, it's like, I don't know if it's not communicating with it or. Do you have, a choice? Gonna... Do you have a choice of ports when you, when you click on upload? Um, no, actually he doesn't. Um, but when I say connect device, it has a Bluetooth incoming port, and then it has a, a USB serial dash at 0001, which those are not working. So I'm ah, trying to yeah. figure out which, we've already downloaded the USB driver, but okay. I don't know. Well, um, if, if, I mean, it's worth a try. Um, try rebooting and come back okay. into Zoom um, because sometimes the driver doesn't work until you reboot. Um, okay, I'm going to try one more thing, and then we'll try that. Okay. okay All right. Sorry. Meanwhile, I want to I want to demo a little bit of something. So, um, so I here's my oscilloscope, and we're showing the the front panel of it. It's kind of cool. It has a a web interface, so I just point a browser at it, and like this is looking at at the screen essentially. And so I have um, the oscilloscope probe connected to, um, if you can see my board, to the analog. Um, to the signal, the A0 wire. So when I turn this knob, you can see that the number, the value, this is the, this is the actual voltage being sent into uh, the microprocessor and it goes between zero and five volts. And, and that microprocessor reads that as a number. And in fact, I can um, put this in a mode where this thing starts scrolling and drawing a graph. So as I'm wiggling this, I can, show the graph over time of what I've done with my knob, right? So kind of cool, right? So this is an analog signal, but this is really electrically what's going on. So that's fun. Um, I can take that same probe, uh, unplug it, and now I'm gonna put it in to the LED. And, okay. That's cool. And it looks satisfying. Looks satisfying. Uh, great.
So here I'm looking at the LED and it's scrolling by and you can see it's blinking on and off and on and off and on and off, right? And if I turn the knob, so it's blinking faster. Now I can't see, well, I can just barely see the flashing going on. But the oscilloscope shows this. In fact, I can now zoom in on some of these and it can tell me um, up in the right here, F equals 34, 35. So it's saying that it's fl flashing at 35 flashes per second. And that's just above what film is. Film is about 24 frames per second. So um, slower than that starts flashing. So I'm gonna slow this down a little bit. Now we're at, oh, up 33 down to, here we go. This is less than, well, it's not measuring a real, less than 10 times a second. So here we can see the flash. I can cruise this way, let's see. Yeah, All right, here we can see the same thing. We can actually measure these um, with, let's see. Um, okay, it's a measure thing. And here, yeah, over down here, it says 7.1, seven hertz, right, right in the bottom middle of the screen. Why can I not see this? Let me annotate right over here. It says um, seven hertz, seven cycles per second. And as I change this, I can go up to 25, 34. That seems about the fastest it can do with this code. And I can cruise all the way down. It's saying, oh, it's too slow for it to measure. So this is this oscilloscope is designed to measure things that move fast, not so much things that move really slow. So what's neat about having a device like this is it lets me um, measure things and count things that I can't do with my own eye. Um, also, it kind of tells us, well, we said we turn this on and off, but is it on and off? It's kind of wiggly on the, on the on and wiggly at the off. So actual electronics have all this noise in them. So you can see things are wiggly here, that wiggly stuff that's really going on. And the circuits inside the microprocessor really say, oh, is the voltage above something like here or below something like here? So it ignores the wiggliness. So everything is really analog, but when we call it digital, it's kind of like, uh, well, we're pretending it only has two values, but in fact, electronics has many, many values all the time because of noise. Uh, the noise is coming from radio waves, my cell phone is sitting five inches from this thing, it's next to my computer, my room is just covered with electronic noise and yours is too. So all these things um, pick these things up. So everything is also a radio antenna, like it or not. So that noise is coming from some of that stuff, who knows? Um, so yeah, so that's that lets us see things we can't see, which I think is an um, interesting idea of, um, what we can do with electronics um, and, and measuring equipments. Clear up all my drawings. Okay, so I'll get rid of the oscilloscope. Stop annotating, okay. Um, all right, so everybody has this working. They can, they can use the potentiometer to change the delay time. All right, nice. Um, what else could you use that rotary knob to do? I'm using to change the delay time. What else could it do? Uh, it could change like if it's on or off. Yeah. Um, how about, let's have it, um, let's see. How about we can use the rotary input to say, I wanna blink five times or 10 times or a hundred times or something like that, right? So, um, so instead, so I'm gonna just say for the moment, I'm gonna say, let's just delay time equal um, 100, okay? So now it's gonna be 100. We're gonna use the analog read for something else. So I'm gonna bring back um, repeat, put it in here, put this stuff inside here, repeat. Okay, 
And I'm gonna make another variable. Um, and we'll call this, let's see, this is the number of repeats. Um, what should we call that? Uh, stego, stegosaurus? Um, um, ginger tea. Uh, green, I, green tea. I think I'll call it green tea. That would be very useful. Green tea. That would make a lot of sense for when someone else wants to read your code. The number of times that the LED should be blinked is called green tea. All in favor? It should be called a uh, repeat number. Okay. Okay. Um, um, sure. Repeat. Repeat number. Something that sort of makes sense because you know, um, sort of something that's true about writing software. The next day, you know, a day after you write your software, you look at what you wrote the previous day and say, what was I thinking? This doesn't make any sense anymore. And so good variable names can help. Um, lots of things help. Comments help too. Um, in fact, that's something you can do. Um, think you can write, add comment, say something. Okay, this is the blink LED um, blink rate delay time in milliseconds. Yeah, type, Wayne, type, right? So that can be really helpful. And now I added a comment to this code. Cool, right? I can collapse that to get out of this way. Nice, I can move it around. I can put it over here, which really would be confusing. Put it over to the side, perhaps. All right, so, okay, so we repeat 10. Um, I think we want to repeat the repeat number right here. All right. Um, but how do I get a, give a number to repeat number from analog read pin? So I could say, again, variables set a variable. This, whoops, set variable. I can change it to repeat number to analog read, whoops analog read pin. So um, I told you, but I didn't show you that the number that comes from analog read pin goes from zero to 1,023. So that's a lot of blinks. Let's try this, but there's a way to make that range closer to the number of blinks I think we're willing to wait for. Um, let's, I'm gonna try this. If you guys wanna copy this, go for it. Oh boy, I think of a big number. <laughs> well, not that big. I'm gonna turn it way down low. Oh no, that's the other way. That's a giant number. That's 1,023. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow. This is guys, this, this is pretty, pretty busy blinking. Um, one, and of course it's ignoring my inputs now because it's basically counting to 1,000, right? Repeating to 1,000. Um, I'm going to turn it way over to the right, clockwise. Um, here's a little secret. Over here, on the right side of the, of the microprocessor module is a reset button. You have to click it from the side. Reset acts just like you unplugged it and it starts from the top again. So I just said, stop what you're doing. Don't count to a thousand. Um, so now it's back at the top. And I'll press the button. But, and I'm still getting way too many, okay. All right, so this gets kind of confusing. Like how, what big, how, how big is this number, right? So um, I'll let you guys catch up with that and, and see what happens. Meanwhile,
And let me know if you have this code copied that without this map part so far. And if you want to do it in code here, it's simpler in code, is it? I don't know. <laughs> That's the big question. Which do you prefer, this or this? We'll talk about it at the, at the end of our workshop. Because that's the debate. Estella, you have this done? Yeah. Okay. And is it hard to make it blink just 10 times? Uh, well, I'm kind of waiting for it to stop blinking. Oh yeah, you have to press the reset button to try again because it's just gonna sit there and ignore you. Have you found the reset button? It's just, um, there's an LED that's lit up over here that I'm pointing to just to the side, at the push from the side like this. It's a little tiny button, tinier, teenier than the button we've been pressing. Okay. Found it? Yeah. Dylan, how are you doing? Good, I'm almost done. Almost done, okay, good. Okay, cool. Oh, they're gonna reboot, okay. So this is kind of interesting. I just changed um, the delay time to be just one millisecond, right? So here I have the number cranked up to make a thousand of them or something. So here the oscilloscope has caught a thousand of these. Um, we can't see them with our eyes, but it's, it's, 
it's seeing them all go by, right? Um, if I go this direction, there it just makes a few of them and, and then it stops, right? So I could do something in the oscilloscope to count how many and all that, okay? So, um, all right, so, so here's, here's a useful way to take that user input. We don't really want a thousand blinks. We want, you know, um, we want maybe between one and 10. So this is a really useful block. It's called map. And map takes an input, in this case, a, num I mean, a number. We'll put analog read pin, put in there and say map that. It goes from zero to 1,023. Another map that between one and 10 blinks, okay? So that says when I turn the knob all the way one way, make one blink, all the way the other way, make 10 blinks. So I've mapped a big range of zero to a thousand to a smaller range, one to 10. Um, and that's not really hard math. You could do that yourself, but it's very, very useful in this kind of thing. And I take that whole thing, which notice the output, the, the, the block itself of map is also rounded corners, which means number. So I'm gonna stick that in there and say, set repeat number to that big long thing. Right now I'm gonna blink between only one and 10 blinks. Let's try that. And now we should be able to count how many it does because it's not making a thousand or a hundred. You get a hundred pretty quickly. All right, let's see what that looks like. Um, Oh, my delay is still pretty fast. Let's just have it 500, that's good. Okay. All right, click the button. Just one, okay. Turn it here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, turn it all the way this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When I put my oscilloscope in this mode, it can count them for us. Look, turn that this way. There we go. Two, three, four, five, six. Whoops, I'm not showing my oscilloscope. Here we go. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop. So the oscilloscope remembers for us. We can count 10. We can put in the middle. Maybe we get three, I don't know. One, there, whoops. There we got six, seven. Now let's can just get one up here. This one blink. One, two, whoop. All right, I go all the way to the end. One, there we go, one blink. Okay, so try this with map. You can use different, different numbers between one and 10 or whatever you want. You could change your delay time. If we had more knobs, we could hook up another knob and one could be for, um, one could be for the delay time and one could be for the repeat number or we could use one of the other analog inputs. Hmm, let's see, we got about 15 minutes left. Um, 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 thinking on my feet. Uh, Maria, what's another input on this board that we might want to use for an input? Um, input, they have a photoresistor, which I think is called 
the light light sensor yeah, yeah. exactly um why don't you guys do the map first and see if that works and then we'll think about we'll use another sensor I got mine working. Okay. And how many how many flashes can you make? How many blinks? Ten. Ten. And you can go all the way down to one if you turn it the other way? Yeah. Cool. So that's kind of useful, right? Yeah. Um this could be um this could be part of a, the project that feeds your pet. And and it counts that it's gonna feed it um, I don't know, 10 fish food pellets or five fish food, no, maybe it gets five in the morning and 10 at night, I don't know, but you could use this kind of thing to control that. Or, um, I don't know, have something that knocks on your door with a secret code 10 times and you turn them off. I don't know, all kinds of things. Um, Estella, how's that work if you change it to go from one to, um, I don't know, 20? Easy to change? Trivial to change, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. it's just so easy. Hmm. Well, Dylan's transcribing. Dylan, you have two computers, two yeah. monitors. How are you doing this? I am using um, my computer and then I have a monitor. Oh, good idea. Um, I'm doing the similar thing. I have two, two monitors, right? So that's where my code is. This is where all the all the Zoom stuff is. And then this is over. Here. Then I have a second camera, of course, for my computer stuff. I'm I'm thinking like when I teach these classes, I should say, ooh, if you can have a second monitor that is so helpful for any time you're doing any creative work in Zoom. Like I wanna watch what's going on in the classroom, but I also have, have the screen of my own writing, creating, drawing, singing, whatever the heck it is. Um, I'm gonna guess a lot of people after a year of Zoom school have realized it'd be good to have two monitors and they're like not that much money. Um, all right, Dylan, you got this working? You do, okay. All right, now just, just because it's fun, um, let's look at the code. If you, oh, in the upper right, there's a button that looks like blocks and then angle bracket slash angle bracket, whatever, that means show me the code. So here's the code. Um, what is going on here? Well, first, notice that we have setup and loop. These are two functions. So in Arduino code, this is called a function. And a function has a name and it has some statements that are part of the function. So these braces, they're called them curly braces, say these are the things in setup. Well, gosh, wait a minute, my code has nothing in setup, empty but the code has this stuff. Well, this is kind of like a, a little present that CodeCraft gives to you. Um, because there's multiple pins, multiple connections to the microprocessor, and they can be shared between, they can be either inputs or outputs. Then we have to tell the microprocessor what it is. So what's kind of cool here is when I say, hey, um, I'm gonna connect an LED to, um, pin four, um, okay, it says that's an output. I'm gonna connect an, an analog read on pin six. Well, that's an input, so it did it for us. Um, it also says something about pin zero, A2, mode two. Uh, what is that? I'm not sure. Okay, all right. Um, so that's the setup stuff we have to worry about. Oh, look, here's the two, the two variables we made. It said their delay time and repeat number. And it says what type of variables are. They're a floating point, like 3.14159256, right? Pi is a floating point number or $1.23. So a number and a decimal point, that's a float. An integer, INT, would be just a whole number, one, two, three, four. So it did that for us. And CodeCraft kind of hides this whole idea of types, data types. So that's cool. Um, and here's our loop. So, okay. Repeat number equals map analog read of A0, 0, 10, 23, 1 to 10. Well, that looks exactly like this. 
right? Set repeat number to map. Okay, that's kind of readable. Um, delay time equals 500. Trivial, right? That's exactly what this says. Set delay time to 500. Um, and then if, if digital read of six, well, this means read the thing connected to pin six, which we said was the push button, um, do this stuff. Otherwise do nothing in the else loop. And okay, so our repeat, which says repeat, repeat number, this one actually does this thing called four. So this is called a for loop. It's a little more complicated, um, but it does the same thing as repeat and then do the things inside there. So kind of readable, but um, I'm thinking that for never ever programmers, let's start with the block code and then do this later, right? Please don't ever worry about, I missed a semicolon or whatever. Uh, I spelled something wrong. So, all right, makes sense. Um, de definitely something to play with because if you want to write this program, that turns on the organic LED and draws the smiley face. You can't do it in block code. You can do some things in block code, but then you end up having the need, you know, to understand what this, what's going on here. Um, all right. So I said, what if we use another input um, to control? Let's see. Um, yeah. Let's use. Let's use the. Um, Let's use the light sensor to light sensor to control the number of um, blinks. So, if you look at the light sensor, it's hanging out over here, just across the board from um, the LED, and it says A4 light. It looks like an LED, but this one actually measures the light in the environment. So it's kind of like the anti-LED, the opposite of it. Give me a number that tells me how much light is in the room. It's actually an analog input. Very much the same as the um, the rotary uh, potentiometer. In fact, I'm going to hook my oscilloscope up to it, and now we're going to graph the output of that of what's coming here. And this is not, no computer programs running here at all. Well, it's not, not a factor. If I put my hand over the light sensor. Oh, the number goes to zero. I take it away, it goes higher. Hmm. Let's see how high I can make it go. If I put my flashlight on it, here's my flashlight. Whoa, that number is much higher. So it, it maxes out with the flashlight and anything in between. So now I have sort of a thing I can wave my hands and get a number between zero and 1024, 1023, right? Not exactly like the rotary potentiometer, but I could say arc light. Hmm. Okay, well, that's pretty easy. Um, if I look above that, it says to the light sensor, it says A6. So I'm just going to quickly make this change from um, instead of reading the, um, yeah, instead of reading the um, pin A0, I'm going to read pin A6. And now instead of using the rotary potentiometer, I'm using the light sensor. So, cool, let's just try that. So all I did was change, physically change the input. All I did is change the one number in the code. I went from A0 to A6, and now I'm using a different component. All right, so how does that look? Um, well, let's go use the scope to count. When well, I wanna count the LED, so put this back over here. Plug yourself in. Come on. Why is this not fitting? What's going on? Oh, okay. There we go. All right. All right. So I get five with just the light being just what it is in the room. If I put my hand over it, I get just one. If I aim the LED the flashlight at it, make it bright, now I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. 
Okay, well, I think I moved it away. All right, so, so now I can use um, the light sensor. It can tell me the blink number of blinks, tell me how bright it is in the room when I press the button. So I'll let you guys make that change and just, um, just change analog read pin from A0 to A6 and you get that. I got, I got seven blink. Seven, okay, blink. your room's a little brighter than mine. If I turn on a light, it would be brighter. There's my light. I have an overhead light, but it's way over there. Um, cool. All right, now how would we, here's a question. So let's have delay time be um, the rotary potentiometer instead of just this number 500. So now we have two inputs, the light and the rotary. How do we do that? Ideas? Instead of saying set delay time to 500, I want to set delay time. Copy the map thing with the analog read and then change it to A0. Yeah, yeah so if I, just, if I just duplicate this, oh no, not all that. Um, well, okay. I duplicated more than I want. I'm gonna throw this stuff in the trash. All I wanted was this, right? So now I copied this thing. Now instead of saying re set repeat number, I'm gonna say set delay time. And instead of saying pin six, I'm gonna use pin zero. And I want this to be from, um, let's see from like 10 milliseconds to a thousand milliseconds, right? And I guess also I'm gonna get rid of that because I don't want, don't want to sweat it back to that thing. Whoops, set, delete that block. Okay, there we go. So now I'm reading the A6, which is the light sensor for the repeat number. And I'm reading the A0, which is the road Rotary potentiometer for the delay time. So now I'm reading two things and reading a button. Wow, we're using three inputs, one output. That's a lot going on for a, our first ever workshop. Let's see if this works. Hmm. All right, everybody uploaded. Okay. I got a whole bunch. Oh, my delay time is really short. That's why. All right, so now I'm getting one, two, three, Oops. So I got five. If I light it up, I got seven. Okay. Um, cool. Now, if I turn this knob, I can make it blink. Slower. And here I could blink really fast. But blah, 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 right? Faster than I, well, pretty fast. I can't count those unless I can. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm noticing that even when this is um, fully lit up, I'm not getting my whole 10 which tells me that this light sensor does not put all the way out to the top value. Most I'm getting is one, two, three, seven. I can't get my 10, right? So I could, um, I could play with this. I could sort of cheat. I could say, all right, let's make this go to 13, which it's never gonna get to, to see if I can get the 10. So that tells me this doesn't actually go all the way up. Oh, oh I know, it doesn't really go over to 2023. There's another way to measure this too, but we're out of time. 
So that's for a future workshop, how to use this serial port stuff right here. So I can print, print numbers and debug my code by printing things to the screen. Really, really helpful. What you got, Dylan? Wait, Does this I make have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, you muted. Yes. You keep on muting yourself. Stay unmuted. I don't. I don't have a question. You don't have a question. Oh, well, that's in itself a question. All right. Um, Estella, what's your thoughts about using um, this block coding for Arduinos? So does this seem familiar to you? Yeah, it's a lot like Scratch. Because it is Scratch. It literally is Scratch. It's actually the same code. Yes. Cool. Um, so it's familiar. Yeah. Um, is it easier than this? Yeah, a lot because you just drag the stuff and you don't have to type a lot. I'm with you. I'm with you. And, and I think, you know, we're trying to remember, we're trying to learn how the hardware works and counting things and measuring things and changing the behavior and less about the coding. But at some point, this kind of fails because, you know, um, how much can you fit on a screen? Well, I guess I can, I can shrink these things down. Then I can't read them at all. But you run out of room on the screen to write a program. You know, and you can, I guess you can pan around and stuff, which is cool. Um, yeah, no, I like it. Um, there's other stuff in here. Like I mean, it knows about other parts on um, the uh, the Grove Kit. So and these are all kinds of parts that you don't have that that you can plug into a Grove Kit. But um, let's see, where is it? There is like here's the temperature and humidity sensor. You can use that. Um, you can use. Um, Where'd they go? Okay. Oh, sorry, it's under I squared C. Okay, I squared C has the, there we go. Here's the 0.96 OLED screen image. You could drag this right into your code right there. And now when your code runs, you can make a angry face or a smiley face or a scared face, whatever. Boom, right? So now we can put this in the display really easily. Right, as simple as that. Now this will get rid of the smiley face that I had and put in some other face. Now this is gonna take a while because the, the code to run the OLED is big and it, it takes a while to compile. So just chill while it's uploading. You can have two sips of tea, maybe three. As it takes longer. If your computer is faster, um, it might do this quicker. This definitely slows down the compile phase. Um, and it's, you know, instead of doing all this code to draw a smiley face, um, if you like their pictures, then you're good enough. Boy, it's just really taking too long. I think we lost. Um, We lost Wahid. I think he's having trouble getting his USB port working. So I'll follow up with him on um, email and figure out what's going on. Upload failure. That is not pleasant at all. I got a upload failure too. You did? Um, very unpleasant. Very unpleasant. Um, now look at the code it puts in here. Oh my, a whole bunch of stuff it generated for drawing this picture. And um, very uncool. We have another bug report. Maybe it doesn't like being in um, setup. It has to be in the loop, which means it does it over and over again. But OK, let's see if that works. Um, so this is really brand new code. It's, it's, it's only it's less than a year old. And it's, it's done by the company that made this board. And I've been working with the, the developer on it. And um, 
So they're really interested in the feedback. Ah, there we go. So it wasn't happy being in setup. And there we go, I got my strange face. So Estelle, if you just put that into, into your loop and out of setup, um, they, there's something, something wrong with their code. Uh, I think they have something out of order. So they didn't check. Okay, I will give them the feedback. Um, but what I like, you know, okay, that's pretty easy. And now I can go, oh, I can actually, I can erase the pixels and draw my own, right? So I could put a border on this or something. Mine just working. Yours is working too? Good. So now you can draw, you know, you can draw smiley faces or whatever. That's kind of cool. I don't know. Um, but if I want to do something just whatever, then oh heart. Um, you know, I'm only I'm limited to what I can do here. But it does generate a lot of code. Like here, here's all the ones and zeros for the for that display, and it goes cruising along. So that would be a pain to type in correctly. It's actually much easier to just edit it right in here. So that's an example. Um, what else is on this board? Um, there's an accelerometer, so you can bring in the. Here we go, the the accelerometer readings, which is on the lower right corner of the board, all kinds of stuff. So definitely stuff to play around. Um, and just as a reminder, um, if you go to Seed Studio, and I'll put this in the chat, um, the chat, come back chat. Um, there's a whole bunch of lessons here, which bring you through all of the different projects um, for this. Um, on the other hand, if you liked, um, you know, being in a workshop classroom kind of setting um, here at Build a Robot, we teach Arduino, intro to Arduino classes all the time, which go through all the different parts in the board and add some more things, in fact. Um, I will stop sharing for a second. Um, and change my video here. Yeah, so, um, so there's more classes to take. Um, to learn all the different parts of the board. Um, and we even add more things like um, add some motion. So here's a, you'll, you'll get a little, a little motor that's called a servo motor that moves. So you can control that with the same code. That's fun. Um, you, you'll get uh, a little, what's called a breadboard, where you can plug in the wires yourself. And here, for example, is an LED that goes red, green, and blue an extra push button. And so you can start building all kinds of circuits um, similar to what, you know, what is done with, um, you know, this kind of Arduino where you, where you wire these together. But all that wiring um, is, makes a lot of mistakes. You know, we'd spend time doing, just like when you're writing code and you miss a semi colon or a parenthesis, um, they sort of get in the way of learning. But once you've learned that it's great to do this stuff and when you're comfortable with it. So that's what we wanna to get to with our next class. So if you've, um, Signed up for today. Oh, hello, you got it. Awesome. Um, if you signed up for today's workshop, uh, the Builder Robot team will be sending you an email about our future classes. And I think there'll be some discount program or something if you already signed the workshop. And of course, if you've already bought the hardware, you don't need to buy it again. So that's cool. So maybe I'll see you in a future Builder Robot Arduino class. Um, with that, any final questions or comments from you guys? This was very fun, thanks. I'm glad you liked it, Stella. Dylan, what do you think? Fun or do you have a headache? Dylan is consulting with his legal team. What do you think, Dylan? It what? Is, was this fun or not? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. glad you liked it. Thanks for being here. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody. Maybe we'll see you in a future class. Thanks for coming and happy Arduino day. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.